Well, when you get to co-host with a television show like 100 Huntley Street with a successful pastor, author, speaker, blogger, and expert on almost everything, just as he's written his new book, you have to carve out some time to talk about it. And so we have. Kerry has written a new book entitled Lasting Impact, Seven Powerful Conversations That Will Help Your Church Grow. Kerry, this is like a book filled with hot topics. We just yeah, did some is. hot topics, but it these is. are like hot topics for the church. Yeah. Why write this book? You know, because I, I love the local church. I, I've led a local church now for a couple of decades, mm. and God has just given me a heart for church leaders. And uh, I meet with a lot of church leaders across Canada and the United States. And I started blogging about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, blogs tell you an awful lot by the comments that you get when you post a blog. And then um, you also get traffic stats if you do anything online. And it's amazing. It shocked me because church growth was a really big subject in the 90s. Yeah. And now most people would be like, yeah, we're not concerned about quantity. We're concerned about quality. Mm -hmm. But when I posted on church growth and I post on anything that relates to church growth, people click, yeah. people read, people share. And um, that started to tell me, okay, I know what's really bothering pastors, even if they don't want to talk about it. And then, you know, another problem that I saw in the church, and we've had to uh, hurdle, you know, come over that hurdle ourselves at Connexus Church, is you have to have really honest conversation mm. with your staff, with your elders, with your team. And to look in the mirror, not to say, oh, what's happened to culture? And, you know, they didn't used to play hockey on Sunday. And, you know, now that they are, nobody comes to church anymore. You have to get over that stuff and just say, hey, what are we going to do to realize our mission? And so we've had to have very honest conversations around our table at Connexus Church. And we have some great leaders, great elders. And when I talk to other leaders, they're, they often are either afraid to have those conversations mm. or they don't know how to have those mm -hmm. conversations. So I wrote the book because I began to get a sense of the seven issues that everybody was struggling with. And I framed it so that you could actually walk this book into a meeting with your leaders. Yeah. You could say, hey, let's read chapter four today. You know, what's keeping high capacity leaders from engaging our mission? And then at the end of every chapter are study questions. And having led meetings for 20 years with elders, these are the kind of questions that we ask around the table. And then uh, I hope they come up with an action plan. And so my hope, my dream, is that um, leaders would be able to make progress and move the mission forward to make a dent mm -hmm. in their community for the kingdom of God. That's and, why I wrote the And book. that's what I love about it is that it is framed in conversational, you know, like you have discussion questions at the end. So if you're having a meeting, you can kind of, everybody could bring their book and kind of talk about the different issues. Let's just go through this, the, these chapters, sure. these seven issues. So why are we not growing faster? How do we respond as people attend church less often? Are leaders healthy, really? Mm -hmm. What keeps <laughs> high capacity leaders from engaging our mission? Why are young adults walking away from church? What cultural trends are, are we missing? And what are we actually willing to change? I want to talk about the first one, because mm -hmm. again, that was for me one that really resonated. Why are we not growing faster? Yeah. You know, I, I am very comfortable in a small church. I now mm -hmm. go to a very large church. And so I think this is a conversation I've heard from different leaders. Of, uh, you know, some people have said, well, we're happy with being small and being a little church. We're not really interested in growing. We just want to stay insular. But you're saying we have to remember the mission. Oh, yeah. Hey, healthy things grow. Yeah. First of all, if you're healthy, you're going to grow. Secondly, we're, this isn't about us. We're not building clubs. We're building the church. Mm. And the church is about bringing the gospel to the world. Mm -hmm. So if you're serious about your mission, it's going to mean growth. And if you like it at 200 people or less, great. Plant 20 of them mm -hmm. at 200 people or less. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we started as a very small church. We're now a much larger church, almost 1,100 on a weekend and 2,300 people called Connexus Church Home. Um, but, man, we're not done. We've barely started. And so um, why are we not growing faster? Often churches are unwilling and leaders are unwilling to look in the mirror and go, what are, because we blame it on the culture. Yeah. Hey, you, can bl you know, people who blame never make progress. You can make excuses or you can make progress, but you can't make both. Mm -hmm. And so I think you've got to look in and say, well, are, is there fighting? Like nobody wants to walk into a family fight. Mm -hmm. And so many churches are in conflict. Well, deal with that. Is it that you're, you're, you're boring? 
you know, there's no excuse to make the Word of God boring. Do you need to improve your preaching? Mm -hmm. Is it your music? Like, often we cater to the needs of our members, but the members get smaller and smaller and smaller in number every year. What if we programmed uh, in a way that would connect with our community? So we ask questions like that. And I think when you really look in the mirror and you ask the hard questions and you're willing to take the action you need to take, your church will start to grow. That also means questioning our leadership as well. Yeah. Saying, do we have the right leaders? Are we, are we tapping into uh, the right leadership skills? Talk about that. Yeah, well, that's why I wrote it with senior leaders in mind. I mean, anybody can read it. Volunteers can read it. People who go to church can read it. But being a senior pastor, I wrote it for senior pastors. It's like, you know, folks, this starts with us. You got to look in the mirror. You got you to gotta ask the hard question. And you've got to be willing to lead the dialogue. Mm -hmm. And so I think when, when the senior leadership of the church, executive pastors, senior pastors, ministry directors, elders, deacons, whatever your structure looks like, mm -hmm. when they're willing to engage the questions, when it gets healthy at the top, it'll get healthy at the bottom. Mm -hmm. If it stays avoidant at the top or, hey, we're not going to talk about it, that's off the table, then the whole organization, the whole church is going to pay for that. I love you have a kind of a litmus test and you say to the leaders, you know, are there teenagers oh, that yeah. are attending your Sunday service? Mm -hmm. That will tell you if you are seeker friendly. Explain. I love yeah, that. You know what? That love came them. out of a very specific story. I was speaking to church leaders in Germany. Which okay. is interesting. Spent a week building into leaders in uh, Norway, Germany, and uh, Switzerland. Yeah. And so there's a language barrier, which makes it interesting. And uh, I, I was on like the third night of building into these church leaders. And if we think it's hard in Canada or some parts of the U.S., just go to Europe and mm. hang out there for a little while. One percent of the population wow. would be evangelical, wow. born again Christians. And so uh, I, I kept saying to them, you know, is your church contemporary or are you? Because I mean, for them, it's hundreds of years of history. It's mm -hmm. not decades. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, Luther was here. Right. Oh, wow. Like, we don't have that in North America. So I'm talking to them, and they said, no, our church is very modern. Well, compared to 1582, it's modern, mm -hmm. but not compared to today. And so finally one day, I was just in a Q&A after I'd finished speaking, and, and they're like, no, our church is very contemporary. And I said, well, do teenagers love to attend? Mm -hmm. And they just went, they all instantly went, no, 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 no. And I'm like... Well, then you're not contemporary. Hey, maybe compared to the Heidelberg Catechism, you're contemporary. But, you know, if your teenagers don't want to come, then you're not contemporary. Right. And so that was a litmus test. And I started asking that question in North America, and it's very clarifying. Mm -hmm. uh, we have lots of teenagers who love our service, lots of young adults in their 20s who love our service. As long as that's true, I don't actually care whether I like my service. Mm -hmm. It's whether it's really reaching them, because my job is to pay, pass on faith to the next generation. And that's actually how I grow. That's, that's part of my growth spiritually. And that leads us to conversation number five. Why are young adults walking away from the church? I love this statistic that says 40 to 50% of teenagers in their last year of school will leave the church and or their faith. Yeah, and even shocking, those are the Scary, students who are involved. Scary. Those are the students who in 12th grade are involved in youth group, involved in the church, who walk away. And I, I quote Kara Powell a yes. lot in that chapter. And Kara Powell is at Fuller Theological Seminary. And she wrote the book Sticky Faith. Sticky Faith, and has got a new one coming out next year that's even better. I read it, she gave it to me, it's amazing. But here's, here's what she said. She said, you know, it's not doubt that's toxic yeah. to, to a young person's faith. Because we think, oh, they'll start doubting, you know, creation, evolution, all of that. She said, it's not doubt. It's unexpressed doubt. Mm. And so the question is, as people move into that phase where they make their faith their own, mm -hmm. do they have someone safe that they can talk to? Do they think they can go, I'm not sure I believe the Bible is real, and not get jumped on or condemned? And if you can hang with them in the tension... They're likely to come through it, maybe two years, five years, 10 years down the road. Like so many people watching, it's like, yeah, you know, I walked away, but then I came back at 30. They're not coming back automatically anymore. Mm -hmm. But if they have Christian voices in their lives that don't judge them, that love them, and that want to walk with them through that, where they can express their doubts, because um, otherwise, if you just judge them and say, oh, well, you can't believe that, well, they'll go express their doubts to people who don't believe and who accept them. Right. And then guess where they're going to end up? And there was such a great point that I don't know if it was yourself or Kara that made in the book about how we have uh, segmented our children for so long. And we put them in their, you know, their yeah. classes in the uh, you know, Sunday school. And then when they get older, we wonder why 
why they're not a part of our, our, our services, and that's because they kind of have been segmented. And so you challenge um, adults to come alongside, maybe empty nesters to come alongside yep. young people and walk with them, include them in the service. I love that idea. Yeah, we don't actually have programming for high school students on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. We offer nothing. And that's very intentional because we say, hey, you're going to learn to be the church and you're going to serve. Half of the people who serve in children's ministry at Conexus, where I am, um, are teenagers mm -hmm. or young adults, you know, who would normally have a program at that time and who don't because now you need to learn how to be the church. Mm -hmm. And we pair them not with other teenagers, but with an adult who can build into them. So it's ministry on that front. And we have age environments, you know, for preschool and elementary and so on, because we think there are messages they need to hear at every stage. Right. But once they hit high school, they're fully integrated into the life of the church and they become the church, which is what we hope for. This is such a great book. Carrie, where can people get this copy? Well, right. they can get it um, at lastingimpactbook.com. Okay. It'll show you all the places you can get it. You can get it on iBooks, certainly on Kindle. And then if you want to order the hardback copy, uh, you can get all the information on Amazon.com there. So we I, just... I'm going to urge you at home to get some copies and give them even as a Christmas gift to your church leadership. This is these are conversations that I think every church needs to have. There is a there's so many different conversations. We've only I had so many questions for you, Carrie. <laughs> so many questions. As you can tell, I love the book. Thank you again, Carrie. Hey, this thank has you been so great. much, Maggie.